Oh, and let's begin with McCarthy. And it it really is amazing to me how there was that big buildup for McCarthy's return. And there was a lot of anticipation, Peter. And we all expected the Cowboys to be pretty damn good. I picked them to be the number one seed in the NFC. Did As McCarthy did get a pass for last year just because of the Dak Prescott injury? Is it that simple of an explanation? Yes. But I also think that one of the things that the Cowboys misjudged, uh, you know, led by Mike McCarthy, is how much of a change that defense was going to be under Mike Nolan. He admitted it yesterday, McCarthy did, that, you know, there was way too much new stuff on defense and you know last year I did something for my column like I don't know five or six times during the year I watched in one of the zoom squares as a position group of some team in the NFL was able to teach that day's process you know and and so What was very interesting about it is that you could just see a lot of the players, you know, in the Zoom squares. I mean, it's one thing to be teaching somebody. It's like remote learning right now in the United States and how difficult it is. It looked really difficult to get a lot of the concepts when A, you're not in the same room with somebody and B, you don't get to go out on the field and practice that after you learn it on Zoom. So for the Dallas Cowboys to install an entirely new defense, totally new concepts with Mike Nolan last year, and not get on the field till about August 2nd, you know, five weeks before you're going to start playing football or whatever day it was that they started training camp, might have even been later than that. You know, like last year, I'll never forget. I was in Tampa at Tom Brady's first time that he huddled with his new offense, August 13th. And so to to institute and to put in a brand new defense the way Dallas did, they just didn't have time for it. And it showed early every week. They're giving up 45 points. Yeah, it was the middle of August because there was an extended break-in period negotiated as part of the deal between the league and the union it allowed things to restart amid the pandemic because guys hadn't done anything. They wanted to slowly get them acclimated before they got on the field. So you're right. It was the middle of August for most teams before they actually got on the field. You mentioned the defense. I want to listen to some of what McCarthy said about the defense. I have some thoughts about the failures from last year and why maybe we didn't expect them after we hear what he has to say. Here he is from yesterday. The, the focus of change would, would definitely be on the defense. So, obviously, with the change in you know in the coordinator and the coaches, um, you know we, we feel uh, the direction that where I see the team needs to get goes is, is going to come under leadership of Dan Quinn. You know, I've, I've known Dan for quite some time, and you know having a chance to to be in position to hire him uh, is definitely a, a, you know an, an asset, huge asset to our to our football operations. So, and. You know, schematically, uh, to the to the naked eye, or layman's you know terms, I mean, I don't think we'll see a, a whole lot because uh, I, I think it's important to to build off of what we did accomplish there. Probably the second eight weeks, you know, our ability to take the ball away, and there was probably some you know conceptual uh, things that I felt like our, our players really really understood and, and played fast with, which wasn't evident in the first eight weeks. So. You know, we're not throwing, this isn't a start over situation. We're able to build off of uh, some of the things we accomplished last year. So that's that's definitely was part of my thinking. And uh, you have the opportunity to hire Dan. And uh, I really like the way the staff has come together. Uh, you know, it's uh, the energy and enthusiasm. I think the diversity of some of the assistants. So it's an, it's an opportunity for improvement. And I, th- I think we're definitely on the right path there. Beyond the changes in coaches, they've added some players, safety, Keanu Neal, and DeMonte Kazi on the team now. But, Peter, I'm conflicted on this. Miles Simmons and I talked about this on PFTPM last night. On one hand, I want to give the Cowboys credit for recognizing that it wasn't working under Mike Nolan and making the change. 
On the other hand, I want to indict the Cowboys for hiring Mike Nolan in the first place, for not recognizing the depths of the changes that would be necessary when you bring in a new system and your personnel maybe doesn't match it. And why aren't you working harder to get people like us to understand it so we can help spread the message of reducing expectations? Because once we got into September and we saw how bad the defense is, we were all kind of caught flat-footed. And we all, I think, had the same realization at about the same time. Well, what did we expect with Mike Nolan coming in with completely new defense? Like the Cowboys did nothing to get people to understand this wasn't going to be the 85 Bears right out of the gates. Not that anyone expected that, but we didn't expect him to be that bad. And I think that that points to failure in a lot of different ways by the Cowboys, that it was so bad and that it caught us by such a surprise. And now here they are bottoming out after a year and changing coordinators. And McCarthy's only been there for one season. Mike, I think the biggest thing is that obviously, you know, Mike... Nolan was hired and all of these plans were made when everyone from Jerry Jones on down thought that they had a full off season to institute them. And so, you know, there's probably no single unit in the NFL last year that suffered more because of the effects of the coronavirus on the United States than the Dallas defense. And I think when you sort of go back and do an autopsy on the Dallas season. I think right away, what what I have thought right away is that the Cowboys should have recognized how revolutionarily different this defense was going to be for them. And they should have said, well, look, we don't have time this year. Hopefully next year, we'll be able to get everybody on the field and we'll continue the installation of this defense. But honestly, they just tried to do too much in one off season that wasn't an off season. It was an off season. And that's where I think the problem lies. Great point. Why does Mike Nolan pay for it with his job then? If there's a perfectly good explanation for why it went so sideways last year, why is Nolan out? Why aren't they building on what they did? We we heard that sense from McCarthy that they're not completely revolutionizing the defense now it's not a full rebuild they're building on some of the things that went well last year that's where I'm confused because what you said makes sense but then I can't reconcile that with firing Nolan after one season Mike it it had to be it had to be that they lost faith in Mike Nolan perhaps not just the installer and teacher but in Mike Nolan the coach and his ability to reach the players if he had had this tremendous, uh, you know, simpatico with these guys as they're going through this horrible time, and then as they rally later in the year to be better, as they simplified it a little bit, <clears throat> it would be one thing, and they would say, okay, Mike, uh, you're coming back this off season, and we're going to continue to get better, blah, blah, blah. But obviously, McCarthy, the, the administration, saw things that they simply didn't like. And what those specific things are, I don't know. But I agree with you. If they're playing better later in the year, it's easy to stand up after the season and say, you know, we tried to do too much this year. And we're going to finish the job this coming off season. uh, But we're going to go forward with what we have. So there's got to be something else there. You had done some reporting on McCarthy's planning during his year off, his buyout year with the Packers, and it seemed very meticulous. And basically he set up a football laboratory in Wisconsin and he had things planned out ahead of time as to what he was going to do. Was Nolan his first pick heading into getting his next NFL opportunity or was Nolan a guy that just kind of happened to be available in that game of musical chairs that gets done when coaches are trying to fill out staffs? That's a good question, Mike. Uh, Mike McCarthy did not, uh, I didn't really press him on it, but he didn't talk about his coaching staff plan. Uh, in fact, if, you, if I had to guess leaving there, whatever it was now, 16 months ago, leaving his house when it was eight below zero in Green Bay one December afternoon, 
uh, I would have guessed that Jim Haslett was going to be his defensive coordinator, but uh, that wasn't the case. So I don't know how he ended up. I know that he's had a long relationship with Mike Nolan going back, obviously, to when uh, McCarthy was on Nolan's staff, obviously, when they drafted Alex Smith in 2005. Um, but I don't know if he was his first choice or if there are other choices along the way. As to Dan Quinn, when you think about his experience and specifically the fact that he's never been a defensive coordinator for an offensive coach who would like to just hand the keys over. Quinn got the job in Atlanta inheriting a system that had been crafted by Pete Carroll, not nearly the same as a Bill Belichick who was a defensive mastermind and he was the guy. For Pete Carroll in Seattle, he's the mastermind and these revolving door of coordinators who kept getting head coaching jobs from Gus Bradley then to Dan Quinn and then there was thought Chris Richard would be the next one that never really worked out but but Quinn wasn't that defensive guru with any one team and then he becomes a head coach and now he's really a coordinator for the first time where it looks like he's going to be the guy who's in charge of that side of the ball do we have confidence especially when we look at how the Falcons uh, have done. They haven't been great defensively under him. Do we think that this is going to suddenly be a much better defense? Or should we have tempered expectations this year, just like we should have had them last year? And, and Mike, I hate to uh, go back on exactly what happened last year, but I do think that some of this is going to be uh, dependent on what sort of off season do they have? Okay. And, if the off season is relatively normal, then what's going to happen? If if you if you've been around Dan Quinn for any length of time, and you've got to be a person of a certain age to know what I'm about to say, but he's the Norman Vincent Peale of NFL coaches. He is the power of positive thinking, and he is going to convince mediocre players, whether they are or not, that they are fantastic and we're going to have the best defense in the league. For, you know, for two or three consecutive years, you know, I would go into Atlanta during training camp and I'd sit with uh, Dan Quinn. And it's so kind of ironic, the signings that they have, because he believed fervently that Keanu Neal was going to be the biggest difference making safety, safety slash hybrid linebacker in the NFL. He thought basically he was going to be what we saw on many occasions, Jamal Adams to be over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, Keanu Neal has never been quite that entire package uh, that Jamal Adams was. But what he's going to do is he is going to convince his players, every one of them, of how great they are and the great things that they can do. And, you know, he's the kind of guy who he believes that if he has seen Demarcus Lawrence you know, pull a great swim move on a great offensive tackle one time that they can train him and coach him to do it every time. So that is what the Cowboys are getting in Dan Quinn. And that confidence and optimism really permeates the entire NFL this time of year when everyone is zero and zero and no one has to play a game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.